Hello, and welcome to another 10-minute tutorial for research. This is using Globus with Amazon S3, and I'm Scott Friedman from the AWS Higher Education Research Team. Today we're going to talk about using Globus with Amazon S3, and we're going to first cover what Globus and Amazon S3 are, uh, and then we're going to talk about some requirements for doing this, and then we're going to configure your AWS account and S3 to allow Globus to access uh, your S3 bucket. And then we're going to configure Globus so that it can access your S3 bucket that you've set up. And then we're going to do some data transfer. So what is Globus? So Globus is, as it says, a unified platform to manage and access data. And it allows you to efficiently move data, reliably move data, and securely move data all at the same time. It's cross-platform. Uh, we're going to use the web GUI today, uh, but it also has a CLI and API uh, uh, access and ability to control it. And it's really used by literally hundreds of institutions around the world, universities, labs, government facilities, and so on and so forth, even some commercial companies. And really, as the graphic says, uh, Globus makes it much easier to work with data and, in this case, makes it much easier to work with Amazon S3. Now, Amazon S3 is one of the primary storage services that AWS offers. Uh, it's object storage. So we have this concept of buckets. You can see little bucket graphics there. And inside, we have objects that are go into those buckets. Today, we're going to be using the S3 standard, which is on the left side of the graphic. Uh, but this technique I'm going to show you today, you can really access any of the, the different tiers of uh, Amazon S3 storage. And you can see the link below if you want to learn more about these other options. Now the requirement for today uh, is that your institution have both an active Globus subscription and that subscription must include the Globus for S3 storage connector. Uh, and you must have a Globus Connect server configured with that Globus for S3 connector. And as I say here, your research or central IT can help answer, you know, whether you have this uh, or not, and uh, if there's any specifics about how they want you to connect and set things up, they can articulate that to you. Um, it shouldn't be too much different from what I'm going to show you today. So let's go ahead and configure AWS so that we can access it from Globus. All right, we're going to log into the management console here for AWS. Type in our username and password. And of course, you're using MFA on your AWS account. And we're going to go to Identity and Access Management, the IAM, and go to Policies. And we're going to create a policy. And we're going to pick the JSON tab. And then we're going to delete what's there. and we're going to paste in a new policy that you can find at the link below uh, that Globus has that helps set up uh, the right access controls. And you can see that I've already edited this a little bit where it says 10 minute tutorials uh, Globus, which is the name of the bucket that I'm going to create in a second. Uh, we're going to leave all of the actions there alone. And can see up above here again that I have the resource name edited and we're going to go ahead and create that and you know, not have any tags and then we're going to give it a name and we're just going to call this Globus S3 access that's what we're going to call our policy and the, the rest we'll leave alone we'll create the policy and we're good to go now we're going to jump over to the user we're going to create a new user we're just going to call this user Globus, you can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to give this user programmatic access. They're going to be able to log in through the web. And we're going to attach a policy. So we're going to attach the policy that we just created. OK. And no tags, create the user. And there it is. Now we're going to download the access and secret keys, because we're going to need that in a few minutes. We're going to close that. And there we go. Now we're going to go over to S3, 
and we're going to create our bucket. Now what's important here is that we use the bucket name that we just used in the policy, otherwise it's not going to work. So make sure that that's exactly the same. You can call yours whatever you like. In fact, you won't be able to use my name. Uh, the only, I think we're going to leave everything else alone right now. If you're curious about all these settings, that could be something you look at in the future. Now we've created the bucket. And there it is. And now we're going to configure Globus uh, to access the S3 bucket that we just created. So we're going to open another tab and we're going to type in app.globus.org and it's going to ask us to log in and I'm going to use uh, ECLA so I'm an alumni and uh, I type in my username and password and it's going to ask for the second factor and we'll get the main Globus Web GUI now. Now normally you would search for your uh, campuses or institutions or Globus Connect server here. I've obviously been accessing mine and you can see those uh, below and we're going to click on uh, the, the middle one there for the AWS storage gateway. Now it's going to ask us for consent uh, to be able to act on our behalf. Uh, it here meaning Globus and we're going to pick our credential and it's going to show me a bunch of things that are, I'm going to give it permission or allow it to do on my behalf. I'm going to click allow and it's going to attempt to access the endpoint or the S3 storage but it's not going to work and it's going to say we need an initial setup so we're going to click continue and it's going to say here uh, it wants to be able to manage collections on the endpoint. The endpoint in here means again our S3 storage. So we're going to click continue and this is where uh, we're going to give it the credentials we downloaded before. We click on status and we're going to enter our access key and secret key that we downloaded earlier and click continue. And now you can see all of our, our buckets and we'll switch back and you can see that they're the same. All right, so one thing to remember is that all of that stuff we just did is a one-time thing. That's just something we set up and in the future when we click on that, uh, Globus will be able to uh, access our bucket directly. Let's go back to the Globus screen and let's search for I have bookmarked on my local computer. So my local computer has something called Globus Connect Personal on it, which you can download from globus.org. And that basically makes your local computer, your laptop or workstation, uh, uh, available over Globus through this web GUI interface. So let's see what's on my computer here. I've created a folder called data. And in that folder is a bunch of data files. It's 100 tar files with some data in it and we're going to want to move those to our S3 bucket. So we're going to open a second pane here. Now Globus is starting to look a lot like uh, your traditional uh, FTP uh, application where you have a local computer and a remote computer and you're going to pick files and uh, send them off to uh, to the remote system. So here we bring up our remote bucket on AWS. And there's nothing in there. And we're going to pick all these data files. So I'm going to get rid of that. And I think I have a folder down here at the bottom. Let's, we don't want to transfer those things. So we have 100 files, 0 to 99. Well, this has some transfer options uh, that you can uh, find out about there. We're not going to get into that today, but I am going to give the transfer a name. You don't have to, or label. And I'm going to start the transfer. So it's been submitted, and we're going to click on View T Details. And you can see some details here of the transfer. You can see on the right there, there's 100 files, 
and it's getting itself set up. The condition is active, which is what we want. It says the transfer has, has started. There it goes. I'm going to speed up time here. And we're going to see here when it's done. Actually, uh, the transfer's proceeding. And what I'm going to do now is something you would never do with an FTP program is I'm going to kill uh, the browser window or the application, what appears to be the application doing the transfer. Normally that would destroy the, the transfer process and uh, that's not going to happen here with Globus because Globus runs in the background, it's asynchronous and uh, it doesn't matter that I close the window. So let's uh, bring it back up again. Go back to app.globus.org you can see there on the left that there's uh, a little green one. I'm going to click on that. And you can see that there's the active transfer. We click on that and we can see that we're still doing just fine. And I'm going to speed up time and it's going to complete. Now, if I go and click on storage, the S3 storage gateway and I click on our bucket, we see all the files have been transferred to S3. If we go back to the console and click on the object or the bucket, uh, you'll see that all 100 files are there as well, just as expected. Back to Globus. Now I'm going to download some data. So we're going to click on a, uh, we're going to bring up our bucket here on the left. And on the right here, I'm going to connect to a DTN, a data transfer node on a cluster. And what's interesting here, we're going to go into a download directory. So we're going to dump these files. We're going to transfer the first 10 of these. Just make it go a little quicker. What's interesting about this, start the transfer. Let's check on it. What's interesting here is that we're transferring data between the AWS so S3 bucket and a remote system. So this has nothing to do with the computer that I'm using right now to do this demonstration. The data is not traveling through my local computer. It's going directly from AWS to the Globus Connect server running the S3 connector and then on to the uh, remote system. In this case, this data transfer node on a cluster at UCLA. And you can see that uh, the transfer has started. And it's done. It's only 10 files. And if we click on this pane and refresh the list, we should see those 10 files on that remote system. So this is the real power of uh, Globus, or one of the real powers of Globus, where you can have these asynchronous uh, remote to remote transfers. Uh, you know, with clever scripting and other kinds of things, you can stage data just in time for computation, and so on and so forth. So this is a really interesting. A capability that Globus has. Um, many other abilities that Globus offers in terms of uh, sharing data and allowing access from uh, 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 you know, remote groups and disparate groups across many different institutions. Uh, it handles that in a, in a nice clean way. Um, if you have any interest in, in the S3 connector, you can reach out to us at AWS. You can reach out to your uh, local IT or research IT or even I'm sure the Globus people would be happy to hear from you and try and uh, help uh, get this capability, uh, make it available at your institution. Anyway, that's enough for today. Uh, please uh, ask any questions uh, in the comments below. I'll try to answer them and we'll try to follow up with some more Globus related uh, tutorials in the future. Uh, maybe the command line, maybe setting up a Globus Connect server. There's other kinds of interesting things uh, we can do. Uh, but that's enough for today. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.